that um, uh, the live and the social media stuff just kind of shuts down, probably due to capacity and everyone on it. Um, so I'm going to try and control what I can here um, and record things and post them um, later. So, um, you know, 60 minute um, hour of power coming at you, Vinyasa Baptiste Inspired Yoga. Um, and we'll go ahead and get started in a cross-legged seated position. Okay, so, take some time. All right, to kind of just shift around, maybe take some gentle twists, pull the heart forward, round in the spine a little bit. All right, shake out the arms. And then just feel yourself get settled in a natural stack of the body here in this cross-legged seated position. Right, and then once you've found that sort of comfortable seat, can we connect to that center line of the spine? Right, bringing your attention to your spine and as though there were that imaginary string attached to the crown of your head. Right, gently allow the crown of the head to pull up towards the sky, allowing the chin to travel under that crown of the head. And you softly close your eyes if they aren't already. Allow your lips to gently close. And give yourself a moment of pause here to just be with and identify whatever it is you're bringing to the practice. Resisting the urge to try and plan about it, make sense about it. Right, just allow yourself to be with and note whatever's showing up right now in your body, in your mind. Uh, any emotional tone you might be bringing to the practice right now. Mm -hmm. Right in this moment of pause, can you just be aware of what that is? And then keep the spine long. From that awareness, can you shift your attention to your breath? Visualizing that air travel in through the nose as it travels down through the neck into the lungs, allowing the belly to fill up as well. And on the exhale, you're following that air back out of the body. And inhale, feeling all those little nooks and crannies you might not breathe into without focus, fill up. And on the exhale, shrinking back down, pulling the belly button towards the spine. slowly over the next five rounds of breath. That's all I would offer for you to do. To pay attention to what it's like to breathe in fully with purposeful attention. And to exhale completely with that same purpose. Staying grounded in the sensations of the breath. Smile to your face. And you just notice what it's like to choose the smile, right? To own and experience that energy you choose. And then from that soft smile, we'll take a big breath in together. And then a full breath out. Awesome. From there, slowly begin to blink your eyes open. Right, and then we'll start to flex and extend the spine here from a seated position. So bring your hands onto the front of your knees. On your inhale, drag the heart through the shoulders. Try and pitch right, an imaginary control with your shoulder blades as you look up. And then as you exhale, round. Keep the hands on the knees and bring a little bit of pull towards the arms as you expand through the upper back. Inhale, drag the heart through. Maybe you set your gaze high. And then exhale, round the spine. Nice, and then move on your breath. Inhale, pulls you forward as you push the chin towards the sky. Exhale, rounds you as you open up through the upper back even more. Right, and then just keep moving on your breath. And right, feeling that warming up of the spine. Right, and even that connection the spine has to the pelvis here. Right? Inhale, moving the tailbone up towards the back of the head. Exhale, round and tuck the pelvis back under you. Slowly come back to that stack of shoulders over hips. 
and then we'll take a twist, allowing that left hand to travel to the outside of the right thigh, pushing your heart towards the right side of your mat, looking over your right shoulder, right? Maybe there's a dog behind you. This is tight. Really nice, gently release, right? Coming back towards center. Pull the heart forward just to kind of neutralize that twist. Come back to that standard stack in the spine, and then we'll take that twist now over towards the left. Right, push the heart through. Try looking over that left shoulder, bleeding to three. Two. One, gently release, very nice. And then from there, hands come into the mat. All right, shifting weight into the palms. We'll step back into tabletop pose, maybe pushing the dog out of the way, say by the tank. All right, so from here, fan the fingers out. Sorry, bud. Hug the forearms in together. Right, micro bend the elbows. We're not gonna lock out the elbows. We're always gonna keep that soft supple bend so we can strengthen muscles, not rest into the joints. Right, and then from this tabletop pose, tuck the toes under and then float your knees right off the mat, that floaty tabletop pose. From there, bring your right knee to your right elbow and then back to the floating tabletop, left knee, left elbow, back to the floating tabletop. And then keep alternating, right, between the contact of knee to elbow, and stoking a little bit of heat in the core, waking up that abdominal wall here. All right, continue to set your gaze in between your palms. All right, try not to look too far forward and try not to look too far in and up. All right, we want to keep that neck neutral here to maintain that big open airway for breath, for prana. All right, here for three, two, and one. Back into tabletop pose from there. Hug the forearms in together, and then fire that left leg straight back behind you, that right arm straight in front of you. Still maintain that gaze down towards the mat. On your inhale, thumb and heel high, and then exhale, elbow and knee together under the body. Inhale, reach it out, expand. Exhale, draw it forward, contract. Inhale, reach, and then exhale, draw it forward. Very nice, inhale, reach. And then pull that elbow into your knee, holding it here, still pressing weight down in that left hand without locking up the elbow. And then extending back into that balancing tiger. And then we'll transition into the opposite side. Reaffirm that connection to the whole hand, and then fire that right leg straight back behind you, left arm straight in front of you. Thumb and heel high, engage glute, glute and deltoid. And then elbow and knee together under the body. Inhale, expand, reach. Exhale, contract, very nice. Inhale, and exhale. Moving on your breath, about three more here. All right, not trying to rush that movement, still keeping those right toes flexed towards the shin. All right, and coming back to where you started. Very nice, one more round. Elbow knee contract, holding it here, push that right palm down. Feel that whole core engage for three, two, Right back to where you started, and then in the tabletop pose. From there, tuck the toes under, downward facing. And then in this first down dog, you're just feeling it out, right? So you're bending the knees, pumping the chest, right? Kind of playing around with the distribution of weight in the arms, maybe kind of shifting side to side in the shoulders. Maintaining length in the back of the neck. Right, trying to carry any tension in the back of the neck there. Or when you find that you are, right, letting go of it. Awesome. All right, so what we'll do here is we'll bring the big toes to touch. We'll inhale high onto the balls of the feet and then drop the heels towards the right. Push that left shoulder down into the earth. And then like you're dragging this left hand towards the back of your mat, right, feel that left lap so the length and I keep pushing right hand down to the other side. Slowly bring those heels back towards center. And then let's drop it over to the opposite side, lengthening that right lat. Keep pressing down through both palms, breathing for three. Two. One, slowly bring those heels back towards center. Stay high onto the balls of the feet, and then we'll gently tiptoe it up, no rush. Allowing yourself to finally arrive in a ragdoll pose. All right, so in ragdoll pose, maybe you grab opposite elbows. Maybe you want to hug behind your knees. You can interlace your hands behind your head and let the weight of the arms right, kind of allow for a deeper stretch of the posture there. Right, but I prefer grabbing opposite elbows. And then, yeah, sway side to side as an option. 
hold the stillness of bouncing up and down, maybe experimenting with all three of them. Right, but just bringing that attention back to your mindset. Noticing any thoughts or things going through your body and brain right now. And then can we empty the vessel here? That is, though you were a two-liter bottle with a cap screwed onto it, and you've now just been turned upside down. That cap is on the crown of your head. Right? Visualizing that cap being untwisted and then letting all tension just kind of glug out of your upper body. Right? Letting go of any expectation you have for your practice. I may be letting go of any sort of specific worry you might be having, any agenda you have for the day. And the concept is we're emptying the vessel here so we can fill up with more of the intention you're about to set. Alright, so from that emptying out, take another big breath in. And then exhale, let it go. Awesome. Hands into the mat. Alright, gently toe the other feet together, big toes touching. And then slowly begin to rise up and find that first Tadasana pose. All right, drawing the shoulder blades back, tucking the pelvis forward, and then reverse swan dive up with the arms. Arms are shoulder width distance apart, creating as much space as you can between the ear and the shoulder heads. Right, so really relaxing the shoulders from the ears. Right, you're not flexing the knees and locking out the legs. Right, there's that soft bend there, lifting up all ten toes. Elvis is neutral, front ribs draw in together. As you inhale, it stays up in between the palms. And then as you exhale, lower hands back down to heart center, allowing the chin to travel once more under the crown of the head. Right, and then that screw cap, that two liter visualization, right, that cap still screwed off or unscrewed. Right, and right now can you visualize filling up the vessel with whatever intention you want to choose for your practice. Right, another way to put it is like, what do you need? What quality do you need? And can you allow yourself to fill up visually with that quality right now? Right, and continue to come back to that lighthouse of intention throughout this practice, right? All right, so with that intention in mind, take another big breath in, and a big breath out. Inhale, reach the arms up, blinking the eyes open. And then exhale for swan dive forward. Very nice. Halfway lift, long flat back, arms reaching back like an airplane, pelvis tucking forward, fingertips on the shins, right? But just make sure you have that 90 degree angle between your belly and your thighs. All right, from here, big breath in, and then exhale. Hands lower down into the mat. Inhale, halfway lift. And then exhale, hands lower down to the mat. Find that halfway lift one more time here, tuck the pelvis forward, all right? Take a big breath in. And then bend the knees, fingertips, scrape the earth, find your first Utkatasana, your first chair pose. Hugging the inner thighs in towards one another, right? And make sure you can see your pinky toe, right? So shift weight further back into the heels, right? Allowing for that protection of the soft tissue in the knees. And then from here, sink a little lower, sink even lower. Take another big breath in, and then exhale forward, fold. Very nice. From there, hands into the mat. Step it back into a high plank pose. From high plank pose, we'll turn it right into side plank. Left hand down under the face. Heels drop towards the left. Right arm reaches high towards the sky. Take a big inhale as you look up towards that thumb. And then exhale, reach that right arm under the body. Inhale, reach it up. Stack shoulder over shoulder. Exhale, rotate under the body. Contract that left oblique. Inhale, back to the sky. Exhale, reach it under. Stop, this is Benny. Right, say hello. Inhale, reach back up to side plank. And then back into a high plank pose. From high plank pose, side plank opposite side. Right hand down. No need to rush the transition. Drop the heels over. I'd rather you bring alignment into the pose, not just rush into it. Big inhale as you look up. And then exhale, rotate under. Keep lifting the hip as you do so. Inhale back to the sky. And then exhale, rotate it under. Awesome. One more. Inhale back to the sky. Exhale, twist, contract, rotate. Awesome. Back into side plank. Back into high plank. From there, exhale, lower down, chaturanga. Inhale into your first upward facing dog, lengthening the belly. And then exhale, downward facing dog. Very nice. 
rise from down dog, inhale high onto the balls of your feet, bend your knees, step or float, find a halfway lift at the top of your mat, and then on your exhale, forward fold. Inhale, rise up, find mountain pose, and then exhale, forward fold, hinge from the heart. Half hinge from the heart, hinge from the hips, lead from the heart. Halfway lift, hands lower down, find that flow. So you can step or float through that classic sun salutation or Surya Namaskar A. And you can skip your vinyasas today and just step back to down dog when I call them out. We'll always loop there. Inhale high onto the balls of the feet, knees bend, step or float, halfway lift, top of your mat. On your exhale, forward fold. Inhale, rise up, mountain pose. Five in some rhythm and flow here. Exhale, forward fold. Halfway lift. And then hands lower down, body moves through. A vinyasa of your choice, knowing that you can also intensify the vinyasa by adding on chin stands, more chaturangas, or handstands. Inhale high onto the balls of your feet, knees bend, step or float, travel to the top of the mat. Halfway lift once you arrive, exhale, release, fold. Soft bend in your knees, reverse swan dive up, root to rise, tadasana is where you land, exhale, forward, fold. Halfway lift, and then hands lower down. Another option for the vinyasa, you get the picture. Destination's always down dog. Awesome. Inhale high, knees bend, step, float, half full lift. Exhale, fold. Root through rise, mountains where you land. And then from here, right back into Utkatasana. Knees bend, pinky toes visible. Shoulders relaxed from the ears, trying to shrug up here. All right, just like you would be in Tadasana. Very nice. Lower the hands down to the side. Think airplane pose. Allow the triceps to wrap around the spine. Tuck the pelvis forward from there, and then float the belly right above the thighs. Setting your gaze towards the front edge of the mat. All right, try not to look too far forward or look too far in and up. All right, neutral in the neck. Breathing here for three, two, one. Forward, forward, very nice. From there, like a zombie, roll yourself up. And then inhale, reach up, Tadasana. Exhale, forward, forward. Halfway lift on your inhale. And then exhale, hands lower down. Another option for that classic sun egg. Stepping back to down dog. is also a choice you can make. Inhale, right leg to the sky. And then exhale, right knee, right elbow. Inhale, heel to the sky. Right knee, left elbow. Inhale, heel to the sky. Right knee straight forward, coming to that strong cheetah pose, that on the charger. And then step into warrior one. Right foot steps forward, left heel spins down. Arms reach up to the sky as you breathe. Right, as always in these poses, we're building them from the ground up, finding the foundation through the four corners of the feet, drawing the heels in towards one another here to turn on the pelvic floor while expanding the inner thighs. Looking up, pressing the palms together, option to back bend, and then lower the hands down to the mat. Step or float that right foot back. Option for the vinyasa. Uh, no need to hurry that sequence. Just make sure you're linking your movement with your breath. Inhale, left leg to the sky. Exhale, left knee, left elbow. Inhale, heel to the sky. Left knee across the body, the right elbow. Inhale, heel to the sky. Left knee to nose, shoulders over wrists, holding for three, two, one, step forward, warrior one, opposite side. Right, same idea though. Drawing that right hip forward in space, feeling that connection right and left hip have towards one another. Right, you can't move one without moving the other. All right, so drawing left hip back, right hip forward. Not gripping the mat with the toes, right? Soften the toes, rooted in the four corners of the feet. Press the palms together overhead. Option to back bend. And then on your exhale, lower hands down to the mat. And then take more choice of movement and breath. I get to the down dog. Awesome. From downward facing dog, inhale high into the balls of your feet. Bend your knees, step up, float, utkatasana, top of the mat. Breathe. Hugging those inner thighs in, right? So knees draw in towards one another. Feeling the hip adductors take pressure off the quadriceps here in chair pose. Lower hands down to heart center, elbows out wide. And then we'll take our first twist now towards the right. Right, so sinking the hips low, making sure knees stay in line with one another. 
rotating over the right shoulder, right? As you try and point your chin towards the ceiling, right? Even if it can't quite get there, right? Just think about moving in that direction with every exhale. Breathing deep from the belly button here. Big breath in, forward fold release. Very nice, from there, fingertips scrape the mat back to Utkatasana, and then lower hands down to heart center. We'll now take that twist to the left side of the mat. All right, so coming into your deepest twist you can right now. Maybe not your deepest twist ever, still kind of earlier days in practice here. Looking over that left shoulder, Trying to find that left ear lobe with your gaze. Hugging the inner thighs in. Breathing for four. Three. Two. One forward fold. Very nice. From this forward fold, we're going to have that zombie roll up, right? So we're just going to slowly begin to roll ourselves up. Eventually arriving back in Tadasana. And then exhale forward fold. Inhale to a halfway lift. And then hands lower down into the mat. Take that vinyasa as an option. We'll see you in downward facing dog. From there, inhale right leg high to the sky. And then step it into warrior one. All right, spending a moment in warrior one, one solid round of breath. And then open into warrior two. All right, spending a moment here in warrior two just to kind of experience warrior two, right? To receive the pose. Focusing on the physical sensation, not some sort of story you have about what you can or can't do here. And then reaching forward, flipping the palm, finding peaceful warrior. Right? Maybe you grab that inner thigh with your left hand, or maybe that left arm goes down the left side of the leg for a little bit more support as you open up that right rib. Rib cage for three, two. Let's win the other hands down to the earth. Right? And then take whichever option you'd like of movement and breath, that gets you to downward facing dog. Awesome, you fan the fingers out, whole hand connected, inhale left leg to the sky, fingertips grip the mat, step into warrior one, reach up. Very nice from there, it's warrior two. All right, having a moment here in warrior two to really draw the pelvis under the hips, not letting the tailbone move away. Yeah, receiving warrior two on this side. Very nice, drawing the shoulder blades in, reaching out away from that, and then forward reach, palm flips, peaceful warrior, choosing what you'd like to do with that right arm. But everyone, let's reach out of that left hip, breathing for three, two. Let's windmill the hands down to the earth. Move around your breath, step or float through, exhale, lower down, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. If you're taking that classic vinyasa. And from here, inhale high onto the balls of the feet. Bend your knees, step or foot. Find a halfway lift at the top of your mat. And then from there, forward fold. Gently toe to the feet, hips width distance apart. Very nice. With your feet hips width distance apart, grab your piece or grab your big toes with your piece fingers. Very nice. And then from there, bend your knees. Look forward, strong, flat back, and then pull the crown of the head down. Fingers to toes, forward fold here. First, really deep forward fold. All right, so really breathe into that intense stretch, into the hamstrings, maybe feeling this into the glutes, hips, sacral iliac portion of the body. Seeing if you can get the forehead a little closer in between the calves with every exhale without shrugging your ear, uh, shoulders up towards your ears, right? Long through the neck here. Right? Like I like to say in this video, right? Confident turtle. Come out of the shell here for three, two, one. Awesome. Release the big toes, hands into the back, right into crow pose here, right? So high onto the balls of the feet. Allow the knees to travel to the backs of the arms, and then bend the, uh, bend the arms, creating a shelf as you begin to slowly maybe transition weight into the hands, eventually bringing the heels up towards the glutes, or the pelvic floor, and hugging the elbows in towards one another, 
I'm mindful to use your whole hand here. Totally okay if you have both feet still on the mat, right? We're practicing. Right over time, maybe you eventually come here. Right, opportunity for tripod, headstand, from your bhavkasana, crow. Right, but we're only here for another four. Three, two, one. Option to step back into a chaturanga, right? Or step back into downward facing dog. Right, again, choose how you want to get there. Put down doggies on this stage. Awesome. From here, inhale, right leg high to the sky. And then stepping into a crescent lunge today, right? Reaching the arms up and towards the ceiling. And then really deep parallel bend in that right thigh, right? But maintain a neutral pelvis. If lengthening the left leg moves your tailbone out of place, I'd rather you bend that left knee so you can tuck the pelvis under, right? And maintain that stack of your spine. Breathe. From here, lower hands back down to heart center, elbows out wide, and then we'll take a twist now again to the right, this time with that crescent expression in the legs. Same concept with the upper body though from our prayer twist, right? So push the heart into the thumbs, tuck that right hip under you in space, right? Right hip kind of wants to sneak out towards the right side of the mat, right? And hug the inner thighs in, looking over the right shoulder for another four, three, two, one, warrior two, spin that heel down, open up the arms, right? Big expressive movement there. Allow that right knee to move towards the right pinky toe, and then from there, reach forward and find side angle pose. Right hand lowers down into the mat as the left arm reaches high, or that right forearm is on the thigh, right? Trying not to collapse that ear towards the shoulder, right? We still wanna lengthen four sides of the neck, looking up towards that lifted thumb, and if your palm is down to the inside or outside of that foot, maintain that left shoulder right on top of the right. Right, if you can't, then maybe come up higher onto your forearm. Keeping the outside edge of that left foot rooted, breathe into this side angle pose for another four. Three, two, one. Rise up to warrior two. Reach forward, palm flips, peaceful warrior. And then windmill the hands down to the earth. Right, arrive in your downward facing dog. Choosing the sequence that gets you there. Awesome. From downward facing dog, inhale left leg to the sky. Right, stay connected to the hands as you pull the knee forward and step into crescent lunge. I right, find that compromise between that straight extended right leg, right? But don't compromise the tailbone, sort of posterior tilting away from the front of the mat, right? Tuck the pelvis forward. Like you're the front ribs, right? Like they're drawing in towards one another, even if that means the right bend slightly. Awesome, holding this crescent lunge, softening the face, letting go of any tension in the brow. Relaxing the muscles behind the eyes as you lower hands down to heart center. And then we'll take that twist to the left leg. Pointing that left elbow high, pushing the palms in towards one another, rotating that left hip under the body as you raise that right inner thigh high towards the ceiling. Right, crown of the head, moving out and away from the shoulders for three, two, one, warrior two, spin down, open up, right, letting to catch your balance there, and then reach forward, find side angle pose. Right, so whether the hands down or the forearms down, right, it's just up to what your body needs right now. All right, but come back to that intention. Like we mentioned, when we filled up with intention there in that first Samasthiti he pose, yeah, like how can you bring more of that intention into this side angle? Right? What qualities would shift this pose for you towards it? Right? Choosing or not choosing to give yourself that. Right? Rising up, finding warrior two. From there, reaching forward, 
finding peaceful water, and then windmilling the hands down to the earth, and I find the flow that you want for down dog. Very nice. And then from downward facing dog, reaffirm that whole hand connection, roll the inner shoulder to the outer shoulder. All right, so like you're rolling the elbows to point towards the back of the mat, and then push the chest towards the toes. And then can the heels disappear behind the toes? Can you bring that slight internal rotation of the thighs into right, the lower legs? Awesome. From there, inhale high onto the balls of your feet. Bend your knees, step or float. Halfway lift at the top of your mat. And then exhale forward, forward. Awesome. From there, slowly rise yourself up. Drawing the shoulder blades back. Inhale, reach arms up, press palms together overhead. Right, relax the shoulders from the ears. Palms are right over the crown of the head. Bring a gentle back bend into your body. And then exhale, forward fold. Step your right leg back into a long runner's lunge. Making sure left ankle's underneath, inner thighs are in. Huge inhale. And then step back down dog on your exhale. On your inhale, high plank, roll it forward. Like the wave starts from your pelvis. One shoulder stack over. Wrists, lower knees, chest and chin. On your inhale, find cobra. Very nice. On your exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, right leg high to the sky. And then step it into a long runner stretch. All right, so the lead foot, right, the ankle has a knee right on top of it. Not in front of it, not behind it. Take a big breath in here. And then big toe meets big toe. Arms reach out in front of you. Rise up into your back bend. And then lower your hands down to heart center. Awesome. Inhale, reach up, back bend. Exhale, forward fold. Step your left leg back into a long runner stretch. Huge inhale. And then hands down, downward facing dog. Lift the hips high. Roll it into a high plank pose. Lower knees, chest, and chin. On your inhale, drag the heart through into cobra. And then on your exhale, lift the hips back. And step it forward, long runner's lunge. Huge inhale. Step up top of the mat, forward fold. Arms reach out in front of you, rise up, back bend. And then hands lower down to heart center. And then hands lower to your hips. With your hands on your hips, toe heel your feet, hips width distance apart. Right? Use your hands to really practice what it's like to start the movement from your hips. Right? To really allow the thumbs to kind of tilt the pelvis back. Right? And then Bringing that movement into the body, lead with the heart and come into that forward fold. Feet are hips a distance apart, and then we'll stand on the hands and find that gorilla pose, right? That parahasasana. So, before you start to pull yourself into it, right, allow yourself to think about dragging the hands out from under the feet, but not letting the feet allow that to be accomplished, right? So standing on the hands, but still pulling forward with the arms. From there, bend the knees, strong, flat back, really feeling those knuckles drag onto the mat. And then exhale, now really pull yourself in to that deeper little pose. Awesome, and then that soft bend in the knees, every inhale pushes the belly against the thigh. Right, and then try to roll to the pinky edges of the feet here. See if you can't maintain weight firmly rooted into the balls of the feet as you really pull down with that long, strong spine. Two. One. Awesome. Hands into the mat. Second opportunity for Bhakasana and Crow Pose. Right, so really fan those fingers out, drive all ten fingertips firmly into the earth. Right, there's a slight cupping in the center of your palm. That's that hasta banda. Awesome. And then bend the knees, come into crow pose. Right, and your variation of crow. Maybe crow for you, both feet are firmly rooted into the earth. But you're just starting to experiment with what it's like to shift like 10, 15, 20% of the weight in your hands. Maybe all your weight's on your hands. Maybe you're in tripod and stick, right? Your hands are different every day. You honor where you're at right now. Breathing here for three. Two. Step back into that chaturanga or flip through through your vinyasa of choice. All right, big inhales in up dog, strong exhales back into the downward facing dog. Very nice. From there, toe heel the feet together, big toes touch, 
right? Again, inner shoulder to outer shoulder. Protect the rotator cuff here. Inhale, right leg high towards the sky. And then twist your dog, bending that right knee high towards the ceiling. Noticing how the right shoulder wants to travel with it. Square the chest, right? Square the shoulders. Push the heart towards that right or left boot toe. Right, confident turtle even here, right? Neck is loose and long out of the torso. Very nice. Awesome. From there, take a big breath in, and then bring the right knee to left elbow and find falling triangle, extending the right leg as you reach up high towards the seal. See if you can't really reach that left middle finger a little higher towards the sky. And then from there, go extended in your falling triangle, reaching that left arm up and over the body. All right, allowing that big, huge opening in the left side of your body. All right, really just experiencing right, that whole big crescent opening. All right, reach back towards the sky with that left hand, and then left hand down, right leg inhales high towards the ceiling. Step that right leg forward, long runner's lunge, standing needle top of the mat. Hands can place on their shoulders. You can hug the inner thighs in, soft bend in the knee. Mindful that you're not gripping the mat with those right toes. And then from that foundation in your halfway lifted standing needle, maybe you take handstand hops, right? And you shift once more, 10, 15, 20% of the weight in the hands while keeping that right foot rooted, eventually over time gaining enough strength and alignment for handstand. Maybe you're working on more balanced stuff and with both hands you want to grab the calf or the ankle, right? Or kind of one of each and allow yourself to pull the forehead closer to the shin. Right, or whatever you need. Right? You can walk the fingertips back and stay sort of a little bit more grounded there to the ten fingertips in the four corners of the right foot. Really quickly. Two. One. Into a runner's lunge. Rick, extend that left leg. Right, big breath in. And then hands down. Inhale, right leg to the sky. And then just kind of shake that right leg out. Awesome. All right, big toe lowers down to meet big toe. Inhale, left leg high to the sky. Twist that dog, right? So bend the knee, open the hip. I'm gonna give you an opportunity for flip dog, right? But for right now, can you stay in that twisted dog? Breathing into that whole strong inseam of the right leg, into the hamstring of the right leg, and even opening up that left hip flexor. Squaring off the shoulders from there, right? Pushing the heart towards the right big toe. Lengthening the back of the neck. Breathing for three, two, one, re-extend, left knee, right elbow, falling triangle, a right, big, strong, wide base with your legs, right? Ideally, those left toes and left fingertips are in line with one another, right, towards the front edge of the mat. Very nice, keeping the outside edge of that right foot into the earth, and then going extended, reaching up and over, right? So everything from that right, pinky finger to the outside of that right ankle, right? Big crescent shape there. Three, right, like a big arching bridge. Three, two, one. Reach that right arm back to the sky. Right hand down, left leg kicks back to the sky. Step it forward into a long runner's lunge. Shift weight into the left foot, standing knee. Right, finding your foundation through the palms under the shoulders, hugging the inner thighs in, moving that right toe towards the left side of your mat. Right, like if you had a laser on your uh, right pinky toe, that laser would be pointing towards the mat. Right, it would be opening up, pointing towards the sky or ceiling. Right, and then maybe that's enough for you. Maybe that's enough in this left hip. Right, chances are your hips are different in there. Flexibility and strength. Right? So just kind of honor the expression you need here. And the intensity lever is really getting that forehead closer to the shin. The closer it gets, the more intense the stretch is, at least in my practice. And here we are, just for the night. Yeah, you can be in handstands for sure. Four. Three. Two. One, hands back under the shoulders, back into a runner's lunge. Big inhale as you look forward. And then left leg shoots back to the sky. You can shake it with that left leg out. Very nice. 
saw it right. Big toe beats big toe. Alright, bring fan out those fingers and roll yourself into a high plank pose. And then from high plank, all the way down knees, chest, and chin. Alright, with your knees, chest, and chin lower down. Inhale, pull yourself through into a cobra. Alright, and then in your cobra, you can go fully extended through the arms with the hips connected and the big toes touching. Right, you can go no hands, right? And you can also do something more midway, right? But really send that awareness into the low back, right? Try to unclench the butt cheeks here, right? And then pull the heart in between the gateway of the arms. Breathing for three, two, one. One, slowly lower back now, very nice. And then from there, reach the arms out in front of you like a slight Y in the arms, right? Like the letter Y. Okay. Not like, why are we doing this? <laughs> and then allow the feet to travel no more than hips width distance apart. Very nice. On your next inhale, press the hips down and rise up. Right, looking down towards that front edge of the mat. Right, but feel everything in that back body core engage. Right, lower back down. Right, back up. Right, exhale, lowers you down. Forehead and nose tap. Inhale, reaches you back to the sky. And then keep moving on your breath. Right, maybe noticing a little bit more stoke in the lower back with every rise and fall. Seeing if you can't maintain that soft face, that focus on a deep rhythmic breath. Right, and even that attention on your intention here. Right, focusing on why you showed up. Awesome, next time you rise up, hold it. And then see here if you can't bend the knees from that lift, reaching back, grabbing that lower portion of the shin or upper ankle, right, or the top of your foot, and then kick the shins back, look up, come into your belly bow, right, from that extended shalabhasana. Rise of flexing or pointing the toe, breathing deep, right, softening the face here, maybe even closing the eyes for another five, and four, Three, two, one, slowly lower back down. Windshield wiper with the arm. Practice with the arms. Windshield wiper with the legs side to side. Yeah, bunch of size here if you'd like. Kind of melting into the mat for a moment. Very nice, allow the tops of the feet to travel back down onto the mat. Hands travel back under the shoulders. Elbows point towards the back of the mat. Don't let the elbows splay away from you like wings, right? Like draw those wings in towards side body. And then from there, slowly press yourself back up into your cobra, right? We're here just for a second. And then from your cobra, back into a downward, or back into a child's pose, right? First child's pose in the back. All right, so the knees out wide, or you can bring your knees together. Finding that width of the thighs, it just allows you to take a moment of pause. Pay attention to the tone on the back. and then exhale, press arching around and into cat. From cat back into tabletop, from tabletop, downward facing dog. Awesome, from downward facing dog. Still heel the big toes together, inhale right leg to the sky, bend the knee, open the hip. Here's your opportunity to stay in this flip dog, or in this twisted dog, or to flip your dog. Rolling onto the outside edge of that left foot, allowing the heel of the left foot and the heel of the left hand to be in line with one another tapping the hips down onto the mat, and then reaching high towards the ceiling or sky first, and then reaching up and over as you externally rotate that left bicep away from center line. 
right? Reaching up, looking towards that hand or maybe even towards the mat. If you have full wheel, another option, right? Don't need my invitation. Own your practice. Awesome. Slowly begin to unflip that dog if you did. Right? And then bring that right knee to the right wrist. Half pigeon pose. All right, always the option for double pigeon or if you're modifying by bringing a hip opener onto your back, right, by all means. Pointing the left toes straight back, walk the fingertips towards the hips, right, kind of pinch those shoulder blades together behind you as you roll the shoulders away from your ears, and then allow yourself to slowly spider crawl yourself into your half pigeon. Breathing deep here. Right, always a lot of choices for what to anchor your attention into. Oh, yeah. Right, and here in this discomfort, in this difficult pose to hold. The brain wants to distract you, right? It wants to start planning or judging or cursing. Right? But can you allow yourself to accept and embrace whatever discomfort there is on the map by softly smiling to your experience? Allowing that shift of kindness to start to change your approach as you send your attention into any places in the body that can soften and surrender. From that purposeful attention and that soft surrender, shifting your attention to your breath and anchoring your awareness in the rhythm of your inhale and exhale. And a half millisecond when your brain starts to distract itself again. Another opportunity to softly smile to the complexity of you. You know that your brain's just trying to survive and protect itself. It doesn't like discomfort. All right, but you have a choice to redefine your relationship to that here. Use the yoga. to something more than just swooping hips or a physical exercise. So we begin to walk the hands back towards the hips. Feel and relief. Awesome. And then from there, tuck the left toes under. Inhale, right leg high to the seat. And you can shake out that right leg. Somewhere from there, big toe lowers down the big toe. Inhale, left leg high to the sky, and you bend and open. Opportunity once more to stay here. And I would have played with it, rolling up and over, finding your foot dogs at full wheels, tapping the hips, reaching high, and then reaching up and over. That tendency, right? Tempting, it's tempting to lock out the right elbow here and just rest into the joints, right? But have the discipline to keep that soft bend in the elbow. Now your body will thank you over time. And maybe that time is up right now. <laughs> Slowly come back into that three-legged down dog. And then come into your half pigeon pose here on the left side. Left knee towards left wrist, right toes point straight back. Right, trying to square off the hips. Awesome. And then leading from the heart, slowly begin to come into your half pigeon here. Right and left. And right, once more, welcoming any difference between right and left. Not from a place of comparison, just from a place of awareness. And right, finding the expression of the pose that works in this hip right now. Something right in between effort and ease. But can you have the courage to chase some discomfort and then to pay attention to that discomfort and notice how that discomfort is redefined through breath? And 
have that initial feeling of I don't want to be here. Notice how that might shift if you allow yourself to just be with whatever it is outside of the desire to change it. back to that specific intention you set, welcoming more of that quality into this pose. As you slowly begin to walk your hands back towards your hips. And awesome. And then from there, you can inhale left, right back to the sky, shoot that out. And from there, lower down onto your knees. Walk your knees in between your hands, cross the ankles under you. Very nice. And then from there, extend both legs out in front of you. And I recommend pulling the glutes away from one another and then grabbing the thighs and internally rotating them manually, twisting them in towards one another. All right, from there, inhale, reach the arms up. And then exhale, forward, fold. The dogs definitely want to be part of this video today. <laughs> So in this Pashimottanasana, I try not to round too much in the spine unless you're hugging behind your knees and you like that variation, right? But I recommend closing the gap between the heart and the big toes, keeping the toes flexed towards the shins, elbows pointing down towards the mat, and then lengthening more of the entire back body here by keeping the spine straight, as opposed to just kind of cutting off that energy at the mid-back by rounding. One more big breath in here. Yeah. And then slowly release, walking your hands up the shins. If the dog's next to you, maybe petting it. Right, or cat, or gerbil, whatever. Um, hips towards the heels, grab the front of the shins. Dip two cannon bar, rock and rolls. Right, very nice. Slowly allowing yourself to settle onto your back. And then stirring around in the thighs a little bit. Yeah. Right. Grab opposite elbows around your shin, bring your forehead towards your knee. It's a tight little yoga ball you find yourself in. Right, and then from there, take a big breath in. And then as you exhale, extend the left leg out onto the mat. Right, allow the back of the head to rest into the earth. Hug that right knee in towards the right armpit. And then tuck that left hip under the body. And then come into your supine twist as you drag that right knee over the body. Reaching that right arm towards the back corner of the mat. And then like you're trying to press your right face cheek in the earth. Right? We want to add the cervical spine or the neck to the supine spinal twist. Right? And we want to stay aligned by keeping the left heel, the right hip, and your heart all in line with right arm. Keeping the shoulders eluded. Just allow the weight of the legs to be the beach impression. Slowly come back towards center. And hug both knees into your chest. Once more, tight little yoga ball. Grab opposite elbows around your shins, forehead towards the knees. Big inhale. And then as you exhale, extend through the right leg. Keep the right toes flexed towards the shin as you draw that left thigh in closer to the chest or armpit. And then from there, supine twist on the opposite side, tucking the right hip under the body as you allow for gravity to just take hold of that top leg. And do up and out away as you keep the heel, the hip, and the heart all down the center line.
using that like left face cheek into the air. And then slowly coming back out of it. Awesome. Draw both knees into your chest. Take a moment to find a pretty happy baby pose that are under Balasana. And then keep the tailbone rooted, right? Tailbone, try not to lift it off the mat. Can you keep it rooted? Pull the heart up in between the feet. Drag the shoulders down. Right, but then still press the heels up. A lot going on in Happy Baby. Right, from there, take a big breath in. And then as you sigh out of the mouth, finding Shavasana, Supdhavada Kanasana, whichever final pose allows you to connect the stance. Settled on the mat, you've got those fixes and adjustments out of the way. And you come back to that observation of quality. Like that quality of just being the watcher, the watcher of the thoughts, the watcher of the physical sensation, the watcher of the feeling. Letting your breath between the normal. Absolutely going to be new in the future. And giving yourself that explicit permission to turn the day in the stillness and silence. Hiding whatever way it shows up in your mind. Be quiet. That choice started to be in the breath. Start to look at the inner control. Allowing your knees to slowly draw into your chest as you rock to your right or left side. Finding a fetal poke. Right, and fetal pose. Just bring your own awareness to that support from the mat up. But also some of the awareness to the boundaries of your body. Feeling that expanded attention, noting where you end, and maybe the room you're practicing in begins, or the outside, you're practicing outside of you. Right, and then from there, extend your top leg, and then slowly press yourself up into a cross legged seated position. All right, right back to where we started. I like going in by my heart and being on top of that, allowing the elbows to fall to my side. Allowing that chin to travel into the front of the head again. Keeping the lips strictly closed. Relaxing. 
relaxing any tension in your face with that soft smile if you choose. Taking a moment here just to observe the benefit of your practice. As always, highlighting the fact that you earned this. That you earned this feeling. And then from that place of self-value, thumbs rise to forehead center, always grateful for the practice. Anyone who's joining us here online, um, and we all have the opportunity to say together, in gratitude, Namaste. Uh, so thanks for joining. Um, I'm gonna try and post as much of these as I can um, through this period of shelter in. Um, and yeah, stay safe, um, stay connected in any way you can, whether that's to yourself, your loved ones, um, via online, or um, as much as you can. Yeah, stay connected. Thanks for joining. Until next time. All right. Namaste.